got no idea if you can see anything. There's Lake Hope Abbey. It's still pretty dark, but uh, I think I've got uh, the right spot for it. My idea is to get Lake Hawk Abbey on the corner, and the sun's rising from just over behind the camera just now, and the sun, as it comes up, should just cast that lovely colour on the side, and hopefully get some reflections of those colours in those windows as well. Oh, there's a couple of bats just flowing past. Let's take one quick test shot, see how this goes. I'm liking the composition. I like the way the... Uh, let me show you. There's the view, there's what we're looking at. I've got the tower, and I've got the two sides sloping away from there, and that's 1.3 seconds at f8. And over there, you can just see the colour starting to come into the sky. Well, we've still got about 15 minutes till proper sunrise, but it is brightening up a bit now. In fact, it's brightened up enough that I don't need the head torch anymore. Yeah, I've just moved very slightly, just to get the tower a little bit more onto the third on the left. And also there's a signboard that I've just hidden behind that little pillar. This, this little pillar just here. There's a signboard I've hidden just behind that, and you've got the tower much more on the left-hand third. I still like the sloping sides, I like the building corner on, histogram's all good. At the moment it's showing one second. Let's see how it goes. Two second timer. And there we go. Shame we've got nothing in the sky, it's really blue and flat. There's not a cloud to be seen. Well, that's officially sunrise now. Of course, there's a little bit of a hill over the background, so the sun might take just a little bit longer to get up. But the colours are starting to show up. You can see the difference from one wall to the next. So much so that I'm... We're down to 0.4 of a second. Well, I don't think we're going to get much better light than this. Shame about the flat skies. That's the sun up now. Uh, but I'm going to have one last go at the Abbey. Well, it's a couple of days later and I'm back in the same spot. Uh, I got the shot I wanted, but it was just that flat sky. It had nothing in it. Uh, so check the weather forecast and there was supposed to be some nice cloud this morning. Now let me just flip you around. Still pretty featureless. There's a couple of streaks of cloud up there. They're sort of catching the just pre-sunrise light a little. Whether it'll be enough to get a better shot than I got the other day, remains to be seen. But let's wait and see when the, when the sun gets over the hill back there and we start to see some light, just maybe, it might catch a little bit of the light from the sun. We'll see how it goes. Well, <clears throat> lined up pretty much the same way as last time. I brought the 17 to 40 lens this morning rather than the 24. Um, I just wanted to see whether just that little bit wider. And I know the 24 to 105 has some uh, problems with aberrations at the, at the borders and 24 didn't quite give me enough reach. I suppose I could have gone a little bit further back, but I wanted that aspect with these sloping sides, so I need to be quite close. So I brought the 17 to 40 today and I'm down to about 20 mil on this one. Let me show you what we've got here. 
Okay, so pretty much the exact same composition as before. Um, a thirteenth of a second, mind you. There's a little bit more light this morning. Uh, F11, still got exactly that same composition. Uh, histogram's good. And hopefully you can see just down there, there's a little bit of pink in the sky. And if we go for a slightly wider view of it, maybe just above the old trees, you can see little bits of the cloud there. Oh, and if James Popsis is watching, plenty of sheep around in this field this morning. Little bit of morning mist still there, not quite burned off over by the river. Well, it's 15 minutes after official sunrise and you can probably just about see some colour appearing over the hills in the background. So I'm hopeful that we might just get the light, but there's still no clouds in the sky, not enough to catch the lights. Let me tell you a couple of things uh, while we're here. Uh, Laycock Abbey was probably famous mostly these days for uh, William Henry Fox Talbot, who, who lived here until he died in 1877 and photographers especially would recognize that name as he was the pioneer of modern photography. Um, in the 1800s when he lived here, he was uh, experimenting with uh, chemicals on writing paper and he actually somehow managed to produce the world's first photographic negative. Uh, now it was a negative because with the chemicals on the paper, the more light that uh, hit it, the, the more intensely those chemicals were affected. They became darker. Um, so although it wasn't a negative you could have produced a print from, not like today's modern film negatives, um, it was the world's first photographic negative. And it was shot in here, inside the building. And if you look over, can I just about make it out? No, not quite, along the side. I'll show you in a little while. Um, take the camera around to the side and show you the actual photograph that he took, well, from the other side. Thank goodness for hot flasks of coffee. I can definitely see some glimmers of lighting. Oh yes, there's the sun just starting to come over now. Let me flip you around. Okay, let's just check the focus. I'm focusing on the wall rather than the, the actual building at F11. Hopefully that'll all be in, but I will focus on the building and so I've got them there I can stack if I need to. 25th of a second at F11. Let's just check that. Focus first of all. Yeah, that's looking good. Take the shot. Now, that's the idea, that's what I wanted. I wanted those slopes with the tower prominent, the wall in the front. I'll have to crop a little bit off the bottom. Um, I could always try and recompose that a little bit, but I don't want that wall too close to the bottom edge. Still, unfortunately, a very flat sky. Um, nothing we can do about that. I really hoped I would be able to get some, some drama in the sky, some light catching on the clouds uh, but I've got the idea with the, the the left hand wall here sort of in the shade while the wall facing the rising sun catches the light now what I don't know is whether I'm getting those catch lights reflected in those windows so let's have a look at that there's some light reflected in here Not not a great deal. Hmm. Histogram's looking good. Focus looks good. Let's just take another one. Focusing on the wall of the actual building. Just in case. 
And just to be really on the safe side, I'm gonna shift my focus all the way over there. And take one more. There we go. So I've got the facility to stack these if I really need to. And this is the very window I was talking about, right in the center there, above the little door. It's called the Oriole window. From inside, looking out over the fields, Fox Talbot managed to capture some light on paper for the very first time, the world's first photographic negative. And it's one of the few places that's a National Trust property where you're allowed to take a photograph inside the building because they think everybody should have the opportunity to retake that very first photograph.